Let's try cutting the spur gear. Pretty simple. We'll go ahead and start the wire feed. Check the position, yeah, it looks good. Turn on the power supply. Come back and hit start. Starts the wire running. And the cut is going. It's currently running at 10 millimeters a minute through quarter inch aluminum. Well, that was a failure. The wire broke just about halfway. I suspect what happened was that um, my flushing nozzle was not close enough. Okay, let's go ahead and try to resume this cut. I've got it lined back up as close as I can. Uh, it'll just have to retrace its steps and it'll be like a second pass. Let's take a closer look at this spur gear, how it turned out. Not too bad, there's a couple of lines there. Is it worse on one side than the other? Yeah, it kind of is. It might be because um, I had to go back around and retrace the steps because it uh, the wire broke halfway through. So one half of this is gonna be uglier than the other half. All in all, I mean, considering how to retrace that, that's still probably a usable part, drill a hole in the center of that and uh, that would be completely usable. Let's try cutting some text. So this is doing five millimeters a minute right now, which is kind of slow, but my flushing nozzle isn't working quite right, so I had to slow it down to stop the wire from breaking. Okay, we'll just let this go and check back in in a second. It's looking pretty good. I did just have to pause it because the middle section of the D fell through and got caught between the roller and the workpiece here. Okay, we've restarted it. Looking pretty good, just on the home stretch. Gonna get the bottom section. Some of you are probably wondering how the pause works. So let me show you that real quick. So I had to remove this piece um, that was starting to fall down. So I just, uh, I hit the pause. Uh, that still keeps the spindle running, or the wire running, and then I can turn off the power supply, reach my hand in there, clear whatever I need to clear. Um, and then what I'll do is bring back up the wire feed. Turn on the power supply. and just hit play again. And that'll just resume the cut. Okay, we are almost done. The filtration pump is running to make this water as clear as possible, so you'll have to excuse the noise. Let's watch it finish.
right, there we go. I'll get this part cleaned up and we'll take a closer look. Okay, we got the part out and dried off. Let's take a look at it. Obviously it doesn't come off the cutter like this. I've just kind of reassembled it for fun. I'll show you that all the pieces still match nicely. A um, couple of things. Um, I paused the print here uh, and then went to bed. Um, and then the next morning when I started it, I forgot to start the flushing when I started the cut again. So I broke a wire. So my fix to this was to come in from the side um, and resume uh, the G-code um, at this corner. Um, and so that's why now this piece, let's see if we can get it apart. Kind of hard to do one-handed. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, you can see where I had to uh, cut in um, from the top. So uh, otherwise this would have been um, connected to this piece. Um, things like the D, the this inside of the D um, fell out um, and uh, it got caught in the roller. So I had to clear that. And this guy just fell out easily, part of the M there. So obviously that kind of stuff can be improved. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, mostly what I'm unhappy with is my design, um, uh, my artwork. Um, I should have made uh, these lines underneath my, you know, the, the paths that I cut so that I can make this all one continuous path. Um, I should have made those smaller. There's no need for them to be this big. Um, obviously the wire um, does not leave that big of a gap. Um, the wire path is actually smaller than that. And that's just in the artwork. Um, and then also, uh, you know, it's one of those things that you're looking at the design on the computer screen and it looks different than in real life. Um, this base, I should have made about the same width as the rest of the font. Um, it would have just been more uniform. It would have been stronger. I mean, this is, this is pretty strong as it is. Um, and it's kind of fun because it shows you how thin the metal can be and still have strength. Looking at the cut quality, I'm pretty happy. Uh, you can see pretty uniform cut on most of the surfaces uh, there where I had to restart. There were some sections down over here where the D, the inside of the D got caught in the roller. Um, the bottom edge you can see here, let's see if I can get that focus better. The bottom side you can see is pretty darn uniform. Uh, corners are pretty straight. Some little areas where it did something weird is usually where uh, I was probably adjusting something with the wire or um, touching the machine and then I, you know, bumped it a little bit. Um, I think that was the case where, um, I think on the V here you can see a little non-consistency in the line. I think I had bumped the machine there. So it's incredibly sensitive to um, bumps, mostly just because, you know, being a wire a desktop wire EDM machine, um, it's not super rigid, you know, it's not built out of cast iron, it's built out of extruded aluminum that's being held together by 3D prints. So um, it, it it does, uh, you know, move around and it is pretty flexible. So, um, but as long as you don't touch it, um, it's, it's pretty good. And, you, you know, you can get pretty um, good quality cuts like this and not have, um, you know, you're not, you're not trying to get the most precision possible. Um, but for most things, um, it'll it'll work just fine with a little bit of um, post processing, maybe sanding or something. You could you could polish this up and and make it absolutely beautiful, um, or keep it like this to show off the uh, EDM um, cut. So that's that piece. Turned out pretty good. Oh, um, overall that took about um, a little over an hour. It was probably closer to an hour and forty five minutes to cut. Uh, tough to say because I had to do the pause and there was a couple of things that went wrong that I had to fix. Um, and also I wasn't cutting as fast as I would have liked to. Uh, the flushing nozzle wasn't working very well. And uh, and so I kept breaking wires. So I, 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 I really dialed down the speed and I was probably doing on average seven millimeters um, per minute um, cutting this. Again, this is three eighths inch aluminum or about 9.55 millimeters. So 
that's three eighths. The metric people, 9.5 millimeters. And then if you're interested, how much wire did this use while cutting? Let's, uh, let's take a look. Okay. Almost two ounces. Really not much at all. Well, if you made it this far in the video, then you must be really enjoying the content. Be sure to check back next week as I hope to post a video showing some of the recent updates I've made to the machine and how I've managed to double my cutting speed.